Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to the farm. So, um, today I'm I'm gonna show you guys how I'm gonna flush these girls for breeding. So, um, I'm gonna explain what flushing is real quick. So, flushing is where you increase your doe's nutrition about 30 days before they are planned to be bred. And it is actually, I've been doing this for a few weeks now, but it is actually only one to two weeks till these girls start getting bred. So, yeah mid-August or beginning to mid-August is when I plan to breed them so that is pretty exciting guys so I figured I'd do a video on what I'm feeding to kind of give an idea for anyone else out there that wants to do this um so what flushing is supposed to do is it's supposed to increase the amount of babies they have by 10 to 20 percent it's not I don't think it's proven to work I've not done too much studies on it so I can't give you guys like exact links to where you can see for sure if it works but i mean to me worth a shot I already need to get these girls in perfect condition to breed so why not um just up a little extra and hope for more babies i mean it's never never something you can truly go wrong with in my opinion so that is what i'm doing this year and i figured i'd just show you guys what i'm gonna be feeding and what i have been feeding hi baby so in my last video um, if you guys watched it, I assessed all the does for breeding. Um, you want your does to be in really good body condition when they breed. A lot of people say you don't. You want them to be fat. Some people will say you want them to be a little skinnier. Um, and in my opinion, um, I like mine a little bit chunkier because if they're a little bit fatter, then that means whenever they are, you know, pregnant, have babies, they aren't gonna just completely. They'll have a lot of reserve to put into those babies to make them really healthy. So, um, as you guys saw, if you watched the last video, like I said, um, my does all look pretty good. Nova over here is really the only one that um, possibly might not get bred this year because she is on the small side. She doesn't have, like, coccidiosis or anything. She's just smaller. She's, like, still a good size for a Nigerian. She's just born later into the year compared to my other babies. So, um, that's the only, this is the only girl, I'm not for sure if she's going to be bred. Uh, she also could use to put on a little bit of weight. Um, her sister Starla over here already has, so that's not a problem at all. It's actually good. So, she's really the only one I'm not sure on, and she's still looking pretty good. So, like I said, all my girls look really good overall, so... Flushing is really just going to help increase your body new, uh, condition a little bit more before breeding. Okay, guys, so I'm in my milking room right now, and it's a disaster. But anyways, it's because Olive's been jumping in here. Because, as you guys can see, you know, four feet tall isn't tall enough for three feet, however much this is, to keep goats out, apparently. So, um, yeah, she's a an, an idiot. She's a smart idiot. And she's jumping in here and making everything a mess. She literally has broken glass on the floor because she wants to have dumping things. She's a disastrous goat. And if I didn't love her so much, I would sell her for sure. Hi, honey. But yeah, um, let me show you guys what I'm feeding. So for grain, so for grain, um, I have been feeding pelleted feed for a few months now. Um, causes the least amount of digestion problems just because it's not so rich um this is the pelleted feed it's like apple flavored so they seem to like it pretty good like it's not their favorite grain i've ever fed they love sweet feed the most but all ghosts do that's like candy to them for every meal it's just not good for them um this is a breeder grain this is the bag to the breeder grain grain i'm feeding it's adm more man's Jotag goat breeder grain as you guys can see um, and it has a additive called RU, which is for rumen health, um, which really helps just get them, uh, the healthiest they can be for just breeding and all that kind of stuff. So, yeah, this stuff is, seems to be getting them really in nice condition. They look pretty dang good right now, if I say so myself. And overall, I'm pretty happy with how them looks on this. Um, so they're getting three or they're getting mostly one and a half scoops they're getting like scoops like this they're getting three of like half scoops so basically one and a half scoop and of the of this um twice a day so they're getting uh 
one and a half scoops twice a day, so they're getting like three scoops of that. And then they're getting two scoops, big, big scoops. This scooper. They're getting three, like, very full scoops of, oh, okay. Soft alpha pellets um, twice a day as well. Basically unlimited, because they're really good for them, high protein, just more natural. They're not organic ones because they're so expensive for the organic ones, but they're overall just way better for them than uh, another type of grain that you can get, which there's so many. But so far, this goat breeder grain and the alfalfa pelts are the grain I'm feeding. So, yeah, guys, that is the grain I'm feeding. And um, everyone looks pretty good on that. And everyone seems to like it quite a lot, actually. So, guys, the next most important thing about flushing is quality of hay. So I actually, oh, oh stuck in my leg. Um, so I typically feed alfalfa for about three to six months out of the year because that's when my gir girls are in milk, babies are growing. So I like to feed alfalfa for about that long uh, and it just gives them what they need. But where I live, which is the Midwest, alfalfa is, Alfalfa is really expensive. I think alfalfa is expensive everywhere, honestly. Um, but where I live, it's especially expensive. I know some places have it way worse than me. So I'm happy that it's not as expensive as some places. Um, it's about 15 to $18 per bale. Sometimes a little more expensive, depending on the quality. But I don't want to pay that year round. So I've been feeding this Timothy Brome hay mix. And they really like it. Um, it's like their second favorite favorite hay compared to alfalfa and these girls are picky when I say picky they won't touch anything unless I'm starving them to eat it and they just chowed down on this stuff instantly so they really like this Timothy Brill mix and everyone's doing really good on it everyone looks great and um you can tell everyone's room in here really cool oh cutie pie so she, they all look pretty dang good on it I think and uh once they get about six months or once they're done having milk and everything the alfalfa is so rich if you don't get a mix which i can't always find mix um so i just get the pure alfalfa it gives them upset stomachs a lot because it's so rich and they're not putting it into anything once they are um done having milk so uh they'll get like diarrhea sometimes and or really like soft poops which isn't what you want if you're not a goat person like me you want them to have you know little, little poopies <laughs> so this, um, so the alfalfa is just too rich for what they, what stage of their, like, production they were in. So I decided to go with a really good quality grass hay mix, which is what a lot of breeders around my area actually feed full-time. And everyone looks really good on it. No more soft poops or diarrhea anymore. So I know it was just a rich hay. And so I'm very happy with my results on this hay. Um, and it's really cheap, but good quality. So, as you guys can see, all the girls really like it. Um, they actually have this, I just built this um, indoor barn feeder because it's been raining a lot lately. Um, hi, Nova. Hi, Starla. They won't get off me. <laughs> it's been raining a lot lately, and those hay feeders out there were starting to just, you know, not work because the goats wouldn't go out there and eat. So, I just got this piece of cattle panel we had and tied it to my barn um, what are they called? Post. And it works really good. It's really sturdy, like very sturdy. And I just stuffed the hay in there and it works really good. So here is the hay. Um, it's a, like I said, Timothy Brome mixture. Good focus. Focus. There we go. Um, but you guys can just tell it's just, it looks like straw, but Brome is known for looking like straw. And then the Timothy is uh, green. So really good quality hay. Very fine fine stemmed and really just good hay um everyone i think looks pretty good on it and yeah so that's the hay i'm feeding um lots of people choose to feed alfalfa year round it's just not what i like to do um obviously do what's best for your herd this is what works best for mine and how i plan like to do things so um yeah that's what i do for hay and now she goes what i do for minerals So guys, this is my mineral feeder. It is a miniature hog feeder. 
and I just filled up with minerals and I screwed it onto the wall and it works so good. We just had it laying around and I thought, why not for minerals? It looks super nice and I overall just really like it. And yeah, so it works really good. Girls love it and they can't poop all in it. At least it's harder for them too. And it just refills by itself until they eat them all. So uh, I'm actually feeding Durafirm Concept Aid mineral <laughs> Minerals, um, which is specifically formulated for breeding does uh, and lactation, that kind of stuff. It has very high copper, very high selenium, um, has 1800 ppm of selenium of copper, which is very high for a mineral. Most only have 1500. <clears throat> so very good for goats and for breeding them. And I just, I'm only been using it for about a week and a half now. So can't say that it's doing much for my girls, but I'm excited to see how it works and how everyone looks in a few months on it. So that's the minerals, hay, and grain that I'm using. So it's really that easy, guys. That's all I'm doing for flushing, just unlimited fresh hay, um, unlimited minerals, and then grain twice a day. Uh, I'll drop down to twice a day, but way less. It's gonna be more like probably three scoops of alfalfa pellets and then one scoop of grain, if that. I don't even know if I'm gonna feed grain when they're bred. Um, just depends on if they need the extra boost or not. So, um, yeah, that's what I'm definitely not gonna be feeding grain like this forever because it's not, it's not good if you feed them grain, this much grain for so long. You wanna just feed them it until you start breeding again. So, um, yeah, that is really all for what I'm feeding flushing wise. Um, I'm actually about to go get them some tree clippings and bring them in here. And we actually have a lot of forage. We have a lot of stuff for them to eat, but as you guys can see, they've eaten it all to where they can reach. So I had to bring them uh, clippings in here if they want tree branches, because when I let them out into our yard to eat whatever they want, they go where they're not supposed to, or go down to the highway, or get themselves in trouble, or, and it just doesn't work out. Um, hopefully in the next few videos, I will have a really cool uh, fence um, out in that field. Might not have one out there in the next few videos but just watch out for that in case I do um I'd love to get these girls out browsing so I don't have to feed too much hay but for now it's just not working out like that and that's fine because they look fine right now and everyone looks healthy so as long as everyone's healthy on just hay and good quality grain then I'm gonna stick with that until I can get these girls out browsing so if you guys have uh, access to pasture um, as you guys see, I do, but, um, it's just, it's so hard to get them out there, guys. The whole process is just difficult. It may not seem very difficult, but it is, and it just doesn't work out for me right now, and it's a lot of work keeping them out there, so, even with my electric fencing, it just is a lot to do. So, it's not happening at the moment, but if you guys can, that is so good for them. You want them out there eating what they can. It's just more natural, more, it's just healthier for them. So definitely recommend doing uh, the most natural way if you have access to it. And if your goats like to eat that kind of stuff. So um, yeah, if you guys have access to pasture, definitely use your, use it to your advantage. Um, so I think that's about it for this video. I've been trying to make this for a few weeks. So um, that's why I haven't gotten one out sooner. But um, yeah, I really hope you guys enjoyed and I'll see you guys in my next video.